should work. As yeah. long as this, if we extended that another half inch, so we do an inch, inch fold instead of a half inch, half inch. Uh -huh. And then when this is up here, we're making a little drip gutter to go over the hinge to protect it from getting soaked, but it needs to definitely be longer. Because I don't think that little baby thing's gonna do nothing. Well, yeah, I mean, when basically the water comes rolling down here and it just stays on the skin and then it makes this edge and then it falls here and goes that way. So what do you think for hole spacing mm -hmm. off of the end starting at like an inch? Like an inch? And then, what do you think, every four inches? Yeah. It's kind of funny how only a little bit needs to be trimmed off the door, but it's kind of a pain. Check this out. Yeah, with all the lumps and bumps and stuff, uh, we figured out that this edge here is not square. So, but that edge over there is square. So measuring off of that side this way, we can trim off enough so that we've got some space to throw a bead on either the sides. Uh, to the, the frame. To the frame. So what Brian's gonna do is cut Cut that piece a little bit shorter than the actual frame by an eighth of an inch. So then his bead will go, his weld bead will go along the outside edge, making a nice seam with the blue and the frame. And then what we'll do is we'll take the flap disc and we'll clean up that edge nice like we did right here in the corners. You can't even tell that was a weld bead, so that's the goal. doing these kind of cuts. What are you looking about? I'm just nervous. Yeah, right. <laughs> I see no TV! Or Facebook or something. <laughs> or YouTube. <laughs> Let's give her a rip. Oh wow. Look at that. I'm using it to... Draw a line. Draw a line. Let's see how she goes. Humpy hems. You guys gotta see how these little end caps worked out. Hold on. Look at my little humpy humps. We're gonna go right in there. Like that. Mm -hmm. and Brian's gonna weld them in. <laughs> what a nice guy. What a nice gentleman. As some of you may have noticed, Brian has been working on the bus on his own quite a bit lately. This isn't because I don't want to be there. I've simply taken on a side hustle to help us pay for all the stuff we need for the bus so we can meet our April deadline. Playing back the footage as I edit this, it's really nice to see how focused Brian is as he figures out how to fabricate these crazy storage compartment doors. Honestly, this schoolie basement project has been a doozy. It's nice to feel like we are finally wrapping it up or at least round in the corner to wrap it up. I am so grateful for Brian's persistence with this project. He's been such a rock star. I can tell he misses me though, especially when he can't find what he's looking for. That's my specialty. Oh, there's that pesky marker. Back to work, Garcia.
So I had this great idea. I've been smashing the ends of these barrels for these hinges. And I found that it makes the hinge a little tough to uh, move because it kind of bends the, the pin in there. So I was like, you know what? What if I just like pop a little bitty bead of weld right on the end where the barrel meets the, the pin? And guess what? I think it was a great idea. So all it's doing is it's melting and fusing the pin with the outside of the, uh, of the hinge. And uh, it still maintains the movement. It's just freezing and fusing that end together. Perfect. This one's like spring loaded now. Pow! Pow! It'll be up in there like that, and then it'll come up like that. Year. So it looks like offsetting the hinge by half an inch is pushing the frame far enough back so that it comes into really nice flush contact with the uh, weather stripping. So that's uh, it's good to note for the rest of them. And it looks like uh, the hanging height is great. Uh, we'll have good contact with the uh, with the rivets. So, excited about that. It's coming good, y'all. Now that this hinges are tacked in place, I'm gonna go ahead and take it down and then uh, put a full bead on that hinge uh, and set it for good.
Once you get all the nails out, make sure you inspect it so that the nails don't chew up your planer. Turn out the hard way. So we're needing to take out all these bottom screws so the frame will lay flat on the back. Once the frame lays flat, we can attach it. That's how much needs to go. Three-eighths off of that edge, too. And three-eighths off the bottom? Let's see, the frame is going to go down, so no. Just the top. Just the top. Well, that fits nicer. Ooh wee, look at that. Show you the back. Yeah. Nice. All right, let's reclamp this. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna hold this side and check that side. Boom. So it's a teeter totter. Now look my way. Now, now you do it. So I guess we need so, to measure the bottom distance, the gap between there and there. Yeah. We could also trim off more of that hat channel because that's what it's teeter tottering on. That looks pretty parallel though now. Yeah. Wanna try that? Yeah, let's try that. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Okay, cool. let's go see what it looks like. All right, so you're gonna hold it in the middle. Yeah. One second, let me pull the hinge back. Good? Yeah. Boom, perfect. All right. Yeah, well, that's good. Really good. Yeah, you can even see it lines up with that old one. And the bottom edge of the skirt? Bottom edge looks great. Perfect. Yeah. So we've got a, the got teeter. in the middle, right? That's right there. That's pretty good. I'm about... I don't know, maybe like a quarter of an inch from the top in this corner. What about you in that corner? Yeah, about a quarter of an inch. Alright. Yeah, that looks good. Alright. So if this is all the way against the uh, the hinge, because the hinge is flush against the tube. Mm -hmm. The hole needs to be above the green, mm -hmm. so as long as you're... Uh, you hit that tick, or this tick. Yeah. Yeah, that would be good. Probably this tick, the short one. Yep. In the middle of those two longies. That sounds good. Boom. First hole. How'd it feel? Good. Like a boss. Look at me kind of measuring. <laughs> Got her. She's measuring. Ish. Where I had to put it? green tape on the ruler, but she's using it.
So here is the important part. It needs to be centered so that it doesn't rub. Yeah. I'm rubbing a little bit on my top corner. How's yours? I'm not rubbing on my top corner, but the bottom corner is close. Okay. So let's uh, start by. I think that'd be okay. Yeah. How's yours? Good. Okay. Yeah. Right. What if I come up and hold it like that? Sure, we see blue in all the holes. <laughs> blue, blue, blue. All blue. All blue. All blue. All right. So now I'm pushing the hinge against it. Yeah. That did to our flat disc. That's oil undercutting. That's why it stinks so much every time we cut it. Yeah. But we have to get that off or the seam sealer won't stick. Ah. So the this rough looking stuff is actually an undercoating that is like an oil of some kind. So using a flap disc to take it off uh, ruined a flap disc. Well, now it's just dedicated. It didn't really ruin it. it de it's now dedicated to the task of removing the undercoating to get down to the bare steel so that we could then use a uh, seam sealer because uh, this area here is gonna go directly against the frame. Uh, and it'd be nice to have that top edge seam sealed. We're gonna weld the, the other edges. Cleaned it off with some mineral spirits. Now it, it no longer feels oily at all and it's down to bare metal slash uh, uh, this, this uh, kind of maroon uh, primer. So I think that we'll probably continue to do that because that top edge would really benefit from having seam sealer on it. Another option would be to cock that top edge uh, once it's mounted. Um, I don't know, we'll explore and see what works best. So this big one here goes on this spot here on the passenger side and something that I'm gonna try different because Aaron did that one where she used the flap disc. I'm gonna try using the wiggly wiggly scraper, scraper bit, oscillating tool, and see if we could just chip this off because whenever I use the um, the awl to scribe the line, it chipped really great, so maybe that'll work. Boom, it chips off great. You get to keep working. So I scribed the bottom rail because I think I'm gonna do the same thing here um, and do the seam sealer on this bottom one because we're gonna have to drill out the bottom rail and put the screws back in and that'll be a great way to seal it. What do you think? I'm back and I'm here to help Brian. Hopefully we get these freaking doors done today. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, doors! <laughs> He's taking his frustration out on the wood. Alright, how's that on your side? Well, there's loads of space on my side. And if you push it up completely? Uh, we're not touching. Shut up. There it is. There it is, folks. Weather stripping is touching nicely, but not squeezing. This is key. Slight compression, here is the key. Right, Brian? Yeah, Aaron. Now Brian's just gonna repeat this all this time. 
And then he's done with that forever. So happy he is. <laughs> I'm happy because you're here. Oh, that's good. Love for So now we're gonna do that to three more doors. If that's cool with you. We might take a bit of a camera break because yeah. Okay, Brian is welding the last door and I am going to scavenge through our foam and see what we have here to uh, piece together our insulation for our doors. We have a lot here, so to us, it makes sense to use it up. Instead of buying another full sheet, we're just gonna Frankenstein it together and tape them. That one looks pretty good. And that one looks pretty big. I'll kind of put that in the pile. Pretty good one. Get ready to paint. We just mineral spirit the edge of this frame. We're gonna blast it with some spray paint because it's bare steel and it needs to be painted um, so that tomorrow when we handle these puppies, insulate them, throw the locks or latches or whatever they're called in them, that we are prepared to handle them. Do it. making this pretty later so don't worry about it all right next step in this project is the as Aaron calls it eaves trough the gutter the little part that goes over the hinge area mini gutter yeah so just like there's a gutter up here at the top that diverts water to the ends we're also gonna have one right above both of these doors here and also the same thing on the other side. We'll call it a continuous mini gutter. A 24 gauge galvanized steel sheet metal, which is a shortage right now, but we found someone who had a stack of it. Ah! And we heard they raised the price by like five bucks. And they did. Over the past month or something per sheet. So we paid for it. There you go. No choice. Yeah, so we're gonna make it out of that. So first yeah. things first, we'll scribe it, cut it, and then take it to the break and break it, then install it. For this little trick here, we're going to go ahead and use the scribe. We took the screws out. We're gonna take the rest of the screws out. But one and a half inch will come up into here, and then one inch will come up, and then we'll break it and have a safety edge, uh, just so it doesn't have a sharp edge. And it'll come up at a slight angle like that, that way when the door opens, it misses it, and uh, the door will open almost vertically. It won't be able to go 180 degrees directly up because this rubber rail won't allow it. However, we'll be able to divert the water that's flowing off the face of the bus, down the sides, and away from the hinge. So this line that I'm scribing is only going to be as straight as the last line that was cut. <laughs> All the 
away. Is right above the doors, beside the bus. And imagine the door hinge being right here. Cool. I think that's enough. That'll probably be good. Let's go back to our barn and check it out. Beats nice Pre-drill. And screw. So now that we have the gutters uh, installed, we've got to do latches. Yay, latches! More fun on these doors. The never ending underbody. So we ended up deciding to go with the deadbolt style latches. So this one here particularly has a T handle. Um, this one was designed for three point, but we're only gonna use two point because of the way our frame is, the rub rail, and a lot of geometrical structures that are in the way. Yeah, and, and we, we know somebody's gonna bust our gonads and strife about this, but yeah. we don't care. Uh, and we think it's going to be plenty strong enough. Yeah, so not that we don't care. We just want it We need to do this the way we're doing it. So there's a lot of different ways to Build latches into your system. There's uh, things called slam latches where basically you slam the door and it's spring-loaded and it locks We thought about doing those um, There's these this style which is a deadbolt style. It's got two pins that go in either side uh, That that's the two two locking version. There's also the three that has this little dealio that goes down here um but for us, this is gonna work just fine. These here are locking ones, so we have a key that we can use. And one thing that I like about these better than the slam latches is that if you get the slam latch that has the mechanism built into here, for doors our size, you'll probably need two. So one on either side. Um, there are versions of the slam latches that have what's called a rotary latch, kind of like a car door that rotates and then there's a, a little peg that sit or a post that sticks out on the sides and that could happen uh, whenever you slam it, it locks it in place and then there can be a three point version of that as well. Other than that, there are a lot more ways to lock underbody storage using all sorts of different knobs and latches and handles and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And this is just the way we decided to go with it. Yep. And trying to understand how they work is a whole other adventure. Yeah, it's a whole other language <laughs> for sure. I'm gonna warm my rumpadump up. Yeah. Do that. Okay, so because we really don't feel like going Aww. through the rub rail, this guy here is basically going to sit right above the rub rail by just a hair. So we just need to position. But it's got to go through the hat channel. I know, but, also, but we don't have to do no, fancy we welding and stuff like that no. like we did here on the ends. No, no, so. no. We don't want to do more humpity humps. Yeah. So but we're, we're going, going through the, the hot channel. So we're going to find the center here using the tape measure and then uh, we'll place the template based off of that. Fuck, why don't we go off center? Yeah. We then, could go off center. Then we could skip the hat channel, like putting a big hole in the hat channel. This is long enough. Yeah. That's long enough because we're going to have to trim this anyway. 
I'm the gal with all the ideas on this locking system, aren't I? I was just gonna be symmetrical in the middle. Fuck that. Fuck symmetrics. We could do symmetrical on the big ones. Okay. But if the, I think the both little ones have a hat channel and yeah, a funny they do. spot. They do. Just put the handle wherever it fits. All right. She has spoken. We're not doing it in the center. It was also my idea to skip the dong. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it too close to this no. because if it's too close, so what if we do like a quarter inch up or so? Yeah. The reason that we decided to skip the dong is because of the humpity humps. Well, the dong's not long enough. <laughs> it's not long enough. <laughs> it would have been <laughs> a major pain uh, with our design and how we have it and the door's too thick and yada, yada, yada. So we decided we were gonna skip that and that these guys would be plenty strong enough. And we talked about people being able to pry up the bottom and stuff like that. Um, this door is very heavy and it's really solid. Like it's a vault, like our front door, also a vault. These are gonna be low enough in here that no one will be able to pry the door up. And if they do, they really wanna get in, so. Yeah. For us, these doors and latches and stuff is to keep it closed while we're traveling down the road. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we obviously want to lock it. But. Yeah. I mean, criminals can do, if, if there's a will, there's a way. YOLO. Oh, did that fit perfectly? Now what? Throw the holes for the rivets. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is exciting. Make it look trashy, no one will try to rob you. Yeah, we can't have it look too good. Sweet. Five and five eighths from there. So, here, step left a little bit. And here, let me move it. Oh, you're moving it! Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm gonna make a mark at five, five, five and five eighths. And then the height of the mark is going to be set this like this. Waller out this hole just a, a hair. Here, watch your hand. What if we make this one bigger too? Hear it. This would be down. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, test. Sick. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that was Rockin', babe. Oh, that feels really good. I'm gonna push down 
want that? Sure. So. Oh, there it goes. Oh. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Same to this other one. Yeah. Just have to use a screwdriver at first pop to pop it open. And then after that, at least that's what I do. I don't know, there might be some cotter pin experts out there who think otherwise. There you go. Cotter pin experts. This is perfection, y'all. You're not holding it. Hands. You're not holding it. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 